Dr. Stout, start the recorder. Perfect. Nailed it. All right. All right. Welcome back. You guys all see the video here, of the, the scene that we're going to work on and finish up. And um, just making sure I got everything set. Great. Everyone, please close your mics. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. So week two of Haystack Rock painting clouds, trees, and water, except no trees in this painting, of course. And I am going to be bringing in kind of more of the detail. Now we're going to bring in some surf and we're going to change up some of the colors um, and uh, bring in some of the detail on the rocks. So everything besides the thicker paint here under the sun is really quite dry, which is nice. I can really build up my paint. Um, it's had a whole week to dry. So my goals first are going to be to kind of figure out the structure of the rocks, bring in some of these forms and shapes, not so much that they look like they're getting hit by light, but enough that it feels like the light that's enveloping from the canopy of the sky is going to be hitting those rocks and revealing some of the forms in the shadows. We're going to also introduce the idea of some mist and waves kind of crashing along the rocks. And then we're going to bring in the cool foam along the bottoms of the waves to create the idea that the waves are coming towards us and maybe introduce a couple spots of the foam or waves uh, further back as well. Um, also get to decide, you know, do I like this strong blue, green, grays that I've got here or should I gray that down a little more? Um, all questions that we'll kind of decide as we go along. Um, last week when I painted this and got it covered so quickly, what we did was mix all the mother colors, right? Um, I'll be doing a little bit of that, but not to the same extent. Um, the uh, only guest color that I have this week is the uh, King's Blue Deep, which is kind of a purple, cool blue. Um, and then I have a little bit of this kind of greeny blue gray that just happens to be from when I cleaned up my palette yesterday. Um, I also have a little bit of yellow ochre kind of a color from yesterday's cleanup. Um, and we'll see if I use that, but I kind of thought that might be nice of a cool green, uh, blue, gray that I could bring in maybe into the surf itself. Um, but when I clean up my palette at the end of the day, generally what I'll do is clean up kind of my warms, my, my yellows and reds into a pile, my blues into a pile, my greenish colors and my browns kind of into a pile. And then I end up with these really kind of beautiful secondary colors that I maybe wouldn't think to mix and I can reuse a lot easier as opposed to just kind of scraping all my colors up and making just a big pile of, you know, gray brown that would typically appear when you mix all your colors. All right, let's, I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce the light that's going to come across in here, just because I think that that's going to kind of dictate, um, and I do have a number of different references that I'm using. This is based on another painting that I did. Um, and then kind of a jumping off uh, reference, which also has some of the information for the rocks that I want to use. Um, so just so you know, but I'm going to kind of lighten <laughs> this area so it's not quite so dark. And I'm going to yellow it so it'll be a kind of a white, yellow, lightly orange color through here. And I'm going to put that in first, just so I kind of know what my lightest lights are going to be. So mixed uh, a cadmium yellow light with some titanium white. And bring just a touch of Indian yellow into that, which will take it towards the oranges. And let's just see what that does on there. I'm going to go right across my sun that I just kind of had there as a placement marker. Okay. 
So by doing that, I'm just kind of brightening and lightening this portion of the sky. So I'm just opening up the values that I can use a little more because that was going to be my lightest light. So by lightening it, I will have a little more room to play and move with other areas of the painting. I'm going to take and add some yellows and oranges kind of to the periphery of that bands of uh, light that I just added just to kind of <coughs> it up. Laura, if you remember earlier when you were asking about the shadows and the light, this is kind of the inverse of that. So this is where the light is so bright, it's kind of blasted out. So now I will be adding color. Let's, I'll show you in the reflection too in the water, but in the, on the periphery where that's meeting slightly cooler objects, I can bring in bands of more color. So the yellows and stuff are kind of right on the edge of where that really, really, really bright area is. That so do you sense. mean on the periphery of the rocks or? No, right? So it's so bright. I just added, I just lightened this whole area. Uh -huh, so that's right. the sun is so strong that you can hardly see into it. So I'll show you in the reflection here. So I uh, will bring some of that really light color or light value, bright light value from the sun, let's put the sun back in there. Right there. I'm gonna reflect that down. Oh. Let's try to make sure it's straight down below. Okay, so add a little bit of reflection, but now I will go back in and right on the edge of that reflected light, is where I will actually have more color. Because if you've ever seen like, you know, where it's so, you know, it makes you squint to look at even the reflected light on the sand, you'll see the colors will generally be stronger on the edges of that reflection. Mm -hmm or on the edge of where you can start to focus in again. So that bright light just kind of blasts out everything, our whole ability to see. Oh. So does that make sense? If you can kind of see into there, um, it goes from basically almost like a almost white. It's got a little bit of yellow in it and then it gets towards the orange. Yeah, it's, it's hard to read over the screen but so you're saying that in that highlight in the water there's sort of a very bright ring at, around the body of the highlight is that there's a colorful uh, the color comes back into that ring yeah so on the, are, is the edge of the highlight lighter or darker than the middle darker okay and that's where the color exists right okay because Michael, does that also up by the, is, did you also do that then underneath the sun just as it came? Yeah, in, that's in the, what I'm kind of putting in here. We'll right be like there, yeah. Orange band. So it goes from the white to the yellow, then to the orange. And then I can get that out towards the pink. Hey, Michael, can you get, can you get the, um, <clears throat> Camera to focus on the picture versus your shoulder. Yeah, every time I get in front of it, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. Let me move that camera. Yeah, okay. Actually, I won't All have right, we'll just angle. live or with I it. Maybe, let's slide this over, and that might help. Yeah, that might help. So okay. I'm, otherwise, I'm getting in front yeah. of it, aren't I? Yeah. Let me know if moving at that. Thank like you. That so do you so do you pull the color of the pinks and the oranges down into the reflection of the water to to 
as well. Uh, right, as the, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? The, the reflection, like you're putting in color there, right? What color is that? Uh, that was, I was trying to put a little red, but it's too strong. So uh, get okay. back towards my orange. Okay. But what was the question? Um, when you get closer to the sunrise, as you're, or sunset, you're moving towards the rock and that reflection closer towards the sun. Mm -hmm. Is is there any color as far as the pink or orange in it right below the, the wave area? Right. right there, right there, yeah. Is there some yeah, right I'll there? I'll have to kind of decide that as I bring in the waves and stuff. Ah, okay, that's when you do it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'll just kind of see what, you know, a little bit, of, you know, a lot of it is kind of seeing how it feels. There's, you know, definitely some science you want to keep in mind. And then some of it's based on feeling, um, you know, and of course I'll come in and warm up the periphery of this rock as well. Um, or where the sun meets the, uh, sun meets the rock behind it. You'll also kind of get it blasted out and it's happening a little bit, but I could really kind of play that up. Let's just see. Ah, uh, there you go. Interesting. Mm. And again, that's just our eye cannot focus on extreme value shifts. It has to have kind of this in-between. Um, and so the sun will just kind of come in and blast that out. And I can, you know, decide how big or how little I can even make it so that the sun is even eating into the rock. Like it appears mm -hmm. to be, you know, um, where you just really can't focus. And so it's up to the painter to decide how much or how little, you know, of that's actually happening. You know, are we seeing like a human? Are we seeing like a camera? Um, so anyways, you get to Yeah, that's pretty extreme. So I'll probably come back in as I add color to the rocks and everything and um, fix that and change that back in. Um, so let's get towards these rocks. I think getting some structure there is going to help. Um, so my, I'm trying to think of what are the colors that are kind of in the dome of the sky that would be kind of reflecting back. I know that I've got the warm, warm light coming from behind it. So that will be not affecting as much the shadow side. So I can think, okay, well, I've got these blues, purples, kind of greeny grays. Um, those are some of the colors that are gonna use to reflect into it. Um, so let's start with the darkest shadowy areas and get towards, I got some Payne's gray, some ultramarine, maybe a little manganese. I could even throw in a touch of um, um, quinacridone red to get it towards purple. And right now, again, I oftentimes will go back to my shadows to give myself some structure. So right now, I'm just gonna give myself the underlying rock structure. That might be too dark because these rocks are pretty far away from us. So I'm gonna go ahead and lighten that dark up a little bit with still full knowledge that this is my darkest dark on these rocks. I want to make sure that it's much darker than any of the darks in my clouds. Let's see if I lit, made that too light. I think this might work. So I'm just going to look for underlying structure in these rocks. Like how are these rocks how have they been built over, you know, the millennia? What are the big shadow shapes? Also remembering that I've got these same or very approximate uh, darks in the reflected areas. I hear birds. Yeah, I think Susan's outside again. I'm gonna 
it's kind of nice. Bringing some nature sounds into my studio for me. Thank you. I'm going to do the same over here. And even though I've got a lot of darks there, those are actually going to get lighter um, than the areas I just left. Um, this is going to be my new darkest dark. Kind of reintroduce some of these rocks that are sitting down in here. With full knowledge that I'm going to bring in some waves that are going to be crashing down. Also need to lower the level of this. I got a, a little floating right on the horizon line. We need to bring it down a little lower. All right, I'm also going to go ahead and use some of this color slightly lighter to bring in my shadow underneath my surf. And figure that out just so that will help to ground this surf. Maybe I can even let it actually get a touch darker since it's quite a bit closer. Let's see. I'm not going to take it all the way over here because it'll be kind of getting brighter as it gets towards the sun. Again, in that reflection area, it's going to be really hard to see the shadows. Um, Maybe hint at another wave that's just kind of in there a little bit. Maybe give it some dark, some shadows. With full knowledge, that I'll be bringing. Um, I'll be bringing oh. uh, the tops, the cool uh, foamy wave tops on top of there. All right, let's get to some of our lighter parts of these rocks. But you're only going to be just a, a touch piece on the mat. A touch lighter. Hungry. Uh, remember to mute yourself if you're not asking a question. And I want to uh, again. I'm thinking of the radiant colors. I'm thinking of the um, the actual color of the object. You know, it's a big brown and green uh, rock there, covered in grasses and. Uh, Lots of different um, vegetation has grown up over there. So I'm thinking in my shadow side, the lights in my shadow side. Does that make sense, you guys? Thinking of, you know, it's further away, so I'm going to starting to gray it down. I'm also thinking of the underlying structure, which I want to hint at, or the structure of these rocks. Um, also, I'm thinking of how do what colors do I choose? It's the color of those rocks being affected by both the atmospheric perspective as well as the radiant light coming down from the dome of the sky, not so much the colors that are coming from the um, sunset, because again, it's on the other side of it. Michael, is that blue? Is that your guess color that you're? your gradation is based on uh, the, uh king well, blue I deep i haven't touched it yet no oh, okay kind of the dark color plus a little white and then i maybe warmed it up just a touch okay um, all right thanks I'm just, kinda, I'm just kind of thinking you know it's got the purples and blues up here so i've got my ultramarine i've got a touch of the quinacridone I've got a touch of the Payne's gray just because that's got kind of seems to be uh okay great but yeah it's just kind of a combination of all the different colors okay thanks and then i just put it down and if it works i can keep adding a little more and if it doesn't i'll stop <laughs> and uh mix a little more of, you know change it up a little bit 
So it's always just kind of testing. I also don't want it to feel really flat, like, you know, I don't want one just big, huge area of color. So I am, you know, constantly kind of mixing up new little areas of color and trying to keep it organic. And this side is kind of facing the light a little more. So it's starting to envelop. I might let it start to lean a little bit warmer, a little bit pinker, but it's really not much because again, it's facing away from our light source, our strong light source. I had left some of the areas really quite dark, and I think that they looked too stripy and too spotty. So I'm just kind of softening those out a little bit. Uh, it's pretty glary right now, just because it's the only real wet paint on the painting. Um, so I apologize for that. It's going to look a little more shiny than um, than I want, but. Let's bring some of that again over to here. Same things happening over here as was happening on that rock. Hopefully by bluing it down a little bit, graying it down, hopefully these rocks are kind of falling back into space and feeling like they're kind of in the same world. Otherwise, they just felt kind of like big, dark cutouts, didn't they? So often asking, how do I make all of these objects feel like they're in the same environment? Building it up, kind of value by value, figuring out who's darker, who's lighter, who's warmer, who's cooler. Let's bring in a little bit of the mist at the bottom, too, to kind of, because right now there's this dark, dark stripe, which is almost kind of the inverse of what I'm going to want. Michael, are you still using your reference photo, or are you doing it all from imagination at this point? <laughs> Great question. Um, I mean... A lot of it's from, yeah, here's the reference. So okay. not a whole lot from my reference because I just changed all these kind of browns to to red, to purples and blues um, just because of the different light source that I've been thinking of. I'm also going to now think of the foam, the mist. I'm going to add more mist into this. And I'm thinking the cool mists to start and then I can warm that up as it gets around like this area will actually get quite a bit warmer. So let's just kind of soften that transition. like to make it a little bit irregular like it's 
literally kind of being affected by the rocks that are down here. The different, you know, it's not all a big flat straight line. Also my opportunity to kind of make some edges crisper and lose some edges. Hopefully kind of gives the painting a little bit of a feeling of movement. I'm gonna add some warmer mist as well. Again, where the light is kind of picking up here. So you can see the difference between the cool and the warm where the light is actually getting into the, the, the mist of the rocks, the waves hitting the rocks. And, you know, my hope is that it'll be subtle, but that the, the viewer will just kind of accept it when they see it. They won't have to think about it too much. Just a little bit of nice detail. The light's kind of coming between the objects, between the rocks. Let's bring down some surf and see how that plays on top of our shadows that we put in here. So hopefully that begins to break up that scene a little bit, um, a little bit over pronounced right now. So I'll come back in and break that up. Let's get some of these into the shade a little more of this big rock. So they're gonna cool down a little bit, get a little bluer. So they kind of tuck back in here. What I'll often do is just kind of, because I know this wave's kind of rolling in this bit of sea foam and uh, everything else I can just kind of kind of come in on this wave soften that up a little make it a little more irregular it's gonna get nice and get some of these warm reflections from above into this part of it And then it's going to get back towards the cool as it comes from on the other side of these rocks. On my in-between of the sh dark shadow line that I have underneath, it's really strong right now. So I'm just going to make kind of a blue, cool transition color. I'm just going to put that right on the edge where that wave, the white of the wave and the very dark shadow, because again, it looks kind of like a cartoon, right? It's underlined here. I'm just going to kind of meet the two and create a transition, both value and color, because it's a color that's facing away. It's from the sun. It's on the other side.
So there we go. That feels a lot better to me. It feels a lot more organic, less cartoony. And then I've just retained just enough of the kind of reflected light from the sky down into the water. So that's beginning to feel a little more natural. Um, and by just leaving little bits of it, it, I don't need to come back in and add so, so, so much detail, so much information, hopefully. I'm just letting kind of the underpainting come through and add a little bit of surf back here. All right, let's zoom in a little bit there so you can, guys can kind of see what I've been working on a little bit. So there you go. Does that kind of make sense? Kind of my thinking in there a little bit of what I've kind of been drawing or painting uh, both values, lights and darks. And temperature warms and cools, kind of getting in. So now what I'll do is I'm going to take some of that warm light from that sunset that's actually going to be across the tops of some of this surf. So I'm going to take some of that yellow, probably add it quite a bit more white because I don't want it that warm. So let's get that into the surf as well. And that will create, so then we'll have a shadow, a back, and I'm talking about the foam as it's coming across here. So clean that brush, get the blue paint off, because I don't want my next color to turn green as I introduce kind of a cool yellow top, maybe a little bit of orange. I'm just gonna bring, hint that, on the top of some of the surf and see how does it play. See if that works and reads. So hopefully you can read that as a touch, touch warmer where the light's coming across and getting into some of the uh, wave tops, the kind of white foam on top. Also using some of that color to warm up again, some of the mist. All right. What do you guys think? Did that work? So when you laid in the a yellow part on the top of the foam, did you leave an edge of white from the surf that comes over like it's falling over? So you're laying that on the back side towards the horizon side, right? Is right. That Let's edge move us in even a little bit further. Ah, there you go. Ah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I see how you did that now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it should be a little warmer on the top. Again, I'm always just thinking, what's the light source? Where, how is it raking across the objects? So the same thing kind of in the rocks. Um, you know, I still need to kind of come in and adjust because that's almost looks like the rock is all of a sudden transparent. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, and then I'll drag some of this down, this warm light, because it's kind of looks like it's also wrapping around the rocks reflection. So. I want to keep making sure things are quite straight as far as reflecting straight down. 
I'm noticing so that like the angles and the edge of the waves as they're closer to us kind of veers down um, bigger on the left side, a bit more wave area. And then, but yet your angle of the white water and the movement of the waves angles kind of the opposite direction, which just makes it so credible. Good. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, so, and I can keep, you know, adjusting and keep working. And when I step back, I would want to see, you know, do I want some of these other ways to have more action or less? Um, you know, and how rough is this? Because a lot of times you get out there and it's just crash, crash, crash in the Oregon surf. Oregon coast, and it can be really kind of messy, lots of foam, lots of, but sometimes the waves are just nice and evenly played, spaced, and you uh, get this whole different thing, but I'm kind of picturing it as being a little more crash, 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 a little more messy. Um, Decide completely if you know if you're painting a similar scene to what you want. I'm going to come in and darken that. So I'm just adding my red to my darks. So it's going to stay. Do you warm. need me to move out? Right now it's too all right because I'll be happy to go someplace else. I've only got 15 minutes more on this thing. All right. Your mic's open. I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. I'm on my cell phone now. Okay. There we go. And yeah, I still want that warm area overlapping, but I made the light, the warm too light um, as far as value. So it makes the rock look transparent. So I'm just going to kind of come in and keep that warmth, hopefully but darken it. Ooh, that's reading is so bright on the monitor. Bits of that kind of come in on top. So these rocks are just poking up, maybe. And got a little funny little blob of paint up here. So I'm just going to grab a Q-tip and just pick that right back up. As opposed to trying to paint it out, I'll just use a Q-tip like a little eraser. All right. I'm going to step back for a half a second to get a little bit of distance. Um, and I'll bring the camera back a little bit too so we can get a little bit of distance and change the angle slightly on it so we can kind of see how are things working, how are they playing. It's always a good idea to step back and see how are things working together. Um, already I kind of see that I could probably bring a little bit of this light kind of along here. Kind of along this area. Um, and the big thing is just, I'm still contemplating this bluey green. What do you guys think about that blue green? Is that too extreme? Should I go more towards gray or do you kind of like that play against the purples and oranges? I like it, but maybe, maybe just near the top go a little darker. Maybe, yeah, maybe the top a little darker. That was the, that's the very thing that I struggle with when I get into those pastels in the, in the clouds, it just, it's almost, if it's not the right position or the right color, then it makes everything look fake. Yeah, it can be really tough. And just figuring out, you know, do I want dark when, you know, I've got such a bright sunset and you can get away with, you know, either way, right? Right. Uh, but it's just kind of what does feel right for this painting. 
I want the awe feeling. <laughs> the awe feeling? like Yes, the, the awe feeling is like, oh my gosh, that is the most beautiful pink sunset I've ever seen in my life, yet you still see the blue and things, but it just, I just don't want it to look like an Easter egg. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, all if everything is special, nothing's special. I always just kind of keep reminding myself of that. So what do you use to pull across the top there? What color is that? A light, a darker yellow? You know what? That's just a dry, clean brush. Ah, okay. And I'm just kind of taking the color that's there, merging it a little okay. bit. That's fun. Yeah, I'm just trying to bring that down. So hopefully I'm not blocking you guys too much by stepping in front, but I'm leaving it back just a second so you guys can kind of see. And again, I think this yellow should kind of come across. Wet sand can be so highly reflective that you can almost have the same values. Yeah, wet sand can be almost near like this wet sand has some texture to it, you know, kind of the rippling of the sand so that it's kind of breaking up the uh, reflection a little bit. But um, I've also got to decide maybe I don't want so much of it dragged down um a little bit tough to say right now yeah it's always just kind of a couple brush strokes and step back a couple brush strokes step back the other thing i need to do is this uh, light area the warm light that i've got in there need to darken that just like up above Just trying to give little ripples to that sand again. So I'm just taking it from within the reflection out. Trying to make it feel again like that sand is wet, even in the reflection of the big haystack rock. And that we're getting some of that light coming through, some of that motion of the sand. <coughs> I'm looking to the shapes of some of the movement over here and trying to kind of keep it echoing through. And I realize I'm probably blocking you guys here um, by keeping the camera kind of back behind me a little bit. So I'll get back and move that here in just a second. Let's bring in a little bit of that cool blue also into the reflections in the sand because it's not only catching the sunlight or the sun the setting sun it's also depending on the angle of the wet sand catching the cool uh sky color as well i'm 
that will usually be kind of on the back side of some of these rivulets in the texture that's in that sand. Sometimes having nice little cool spots really read beautifully against those warm reflections. Hopefully that's making sense. I'm kind of getting lost in my painting, having a little hard time talking and painting at the same time as I keep kind of looking for areas I can introduce a little bit of cool. So are you guys able to see that, those little blue strips that I'm putting kind of next to the... Um, yep. Great. That hopefully kind of yep. mimics the sky. And again, we're just trying to create a world that's all related. My sand is in the same world as my sky. My rocks are in the same world as my sand and my sky. And everybody is relating and playing nicely together, complementing each other. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Let's move that camera back so I'm not literally just videoing my back as I paint. Great. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. There you go. Now you can really see kind of these cool blues that are kind of being incorporated into the shadows. And doesn't that feel like the cool sky is also getting reflected down, not just light and dark? Yeah, and how would I darken that sky? Let's bring some of this blue. I'm going to bring a little bit of that into the cool. Blue. Is there ever something that would not be reflected down into the water? Or is everything always reflected? Yeah, what do you mean? Like, what would it be? Well, I see here the sun's reflected, the sky's reflected. I, I'm not sure what I mean. I mean, it's... Um, any part of something, clouds, anything never reflected? Or is everything always a reflection in the water? I mean, a mirror, a mirror, the, a mirror. It's all about the angle. So imagine that this wet sand is a mirror, but it's also like a warped mirror. Like it's got these little rivulets in okay. it, right? From, you know, the texture of the wet sand. Um, so got that's it. warping it. If you can think of a warped mirror, like a circus mirror. So some of those warps are facing more towards the sun and are picking up more of that. Some of these uh, warps are facing more towards the top of the sky. And then some of the warps as they come back are facing more towards us, more towards away from the light. So they're picking up the cools. So it's an interesting concept, right? To think of it as a, as a mirror and then to take that mirror and slightly warp it and make it hopefully somewhat interesting. And again, kind of lived in and organic and feeling natural. Um, I am bringing some of this blue and some of this blue into these rocks and also into some of the surf, um, just again to kind of make everything feel related. So I'm just taking some of this cools, uh, keeping it away from the sun. And also soften some of these brush strokes. They're not so um, you know, I want them a little crisper because it's a rock, but it's also off in the distance. Um, again, I apologize that this rock is so reflective right now. It's not reading as, uh, you know, as I hope it will when it dries a little more. Um, as we kind of are winding down on this painting, at least for today, what are uh, any parts that you're seeing that maybe don't look as natural or parts that you kind of like and are happy with how they ended up. I'm imagining that maybe towards the end, 
that bright sunbeam that's in the sky by the rock that you might smear it a little to the right to kind of blind out um, a little of that edge of the rock. No, right by the left edge of the rock of Haystack. Yeah, that sun that's closest to that edge. Uh -huh. Are you gonna like um, kind of cause a little bit of sunbeam glare to, to spill out more over the rock itself? like to obliterate part of that rock. Let's see. Like if you if you did your brush horizontally, would that or would that just make it look like mist? Um, so I, I just added some light, but it was too cool. It's too white. So I need to definitely kind of warm that up. Kind of like that, where it's kind of coming in and eating into the rock a little bit, like hard to I guess I'm thinking of like a camera sees it, how it might like do a sunburst there. Mm -hmm. Does that ever work in a painting where you do a sunburst or does it look too uh, much like, um, does it make it look too misty if you tried to do a horizontal sunburst? Uh, yeah, no, it can definitely work. Um, let me kind of warm back up that paint I just added, got a little cool. So I brought that back and now let's, let's try an experiment, shall we? Good news is if this doesn't work, I know exactly who to blame it on. <laughs> right, Michelle? Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I think I know what you're saying. So you kind of want it to feel like, a, oh, like that kind of lens flare. Yeah, but on a small scale. Okay, let's do it. So hopefully I've cleaned that brush enough and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that and I'm gonna just bring it in over that edge. And it's good. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Let's do it again, just loading this brush up a little more with some of that warm light that's there. So kind of like that. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, and I think I can take about some of this warm red and bring it back in. I like it. Good, yeah, I like it. Let's, let's load it up one more time and bring it a little further across. Like that. Yeah. Like that. JJ Abrams would be proud of us. <laughs> I like that. Soft edge. Thank you for showing us how that's done. Yeah, I mean, and you could have just waited for it to dry too, right? I could have. Um, but let's. Yeah, I'll have to sit with that one and see because it kind of appears like a bite out of the rock a little bit. So I kind of got to go, okay, do I need to warm that up? And maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe after it's dry, I can come back in and glaze a little bit of Indian yellow or some warmth a little bit. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Maybe after I uh, live with it, I'll totally just like it as it is. That's the great thing about oil paints is you can Change your mind as you live with it for a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to let it go. I heard a couple other people saying they liked it, so we will see. Um, yeah, um, now I just kind of can decide too. Do I want there to be like the underside of, oh, I was thinking as I was looking at this, that it might almost be nice to um, let there be, I don't know, I kind of was, 
contemplated taking this yellow and this light out further, like all the way across, or do we kind of like the fact that this kind of cloud is maybe connected here on the edges with just a hole down the middle of it? And then my other thought was, again, do I want to, maybe some of this light is coming and catching. Let's just see what happens. Let's get a little crazy with that. Um, catching the underside of the clouds. So picturing what is the underside of these clouds and it kind of, a little lighter than that. It's got to make sure it's not getting too stripy if I start to do that. Yeah, it's funny how a little bit more sometimes is just way too much. And it's always just kind of put it on, test it. Does it read? Does it play well? If not, you know, does it just need to be have softened edges and be less? Or does it need to go all the way back to before? And right now, I'm just going to soften the top edge so it's not just a stripe. I want it to kind of fade into those clouds. Not sure. So now I'll just take my paper towel and wipe that back off. Also a really nice thing about having a dry underpainting. I'm just gonna take that now. There's just kind of a ghost of it. It kind of warms up a little bit. It's nice. Um, the other thing I'm contemplating is having this band of color under here being a little cooler, a little grayer. So again, that it's the warmer clouds on top. Um, I won't make you guys watch me do that, but that's something I might do. And again, I'm still just going to live with where it is now for a little bit and contemplate, do I, what do I do with these blues and gray uh, up here if it's too strong? I, and that's just me, right? I'm a little bit scared of strong colors in my paintings. And I need to uh, learn to have some paintings with more color. Um, so all my paintings don't end up that kind of tonalistic feel. There we go. That's how I'm going to end it for today. And hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, let's. Thank you. Yeah, let's go ahead and step back over to. Um, the computer. I know class is officially over time wise, but if anybody wants to stick with me, um, we can do a little bit of feedback uh, critique on there. Yep. Good idea. Yep. Yes. And I assume you'll post maybe maybe in this group you'll post this when you finish it. Uh, sure. <gasps> oh, uh -oh. All right. Uh, great. All right. So there's just a couple of us left, it looks like. Gail's back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gail. I'm now in my car. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. Are you driving? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> a few of us. Okay. Great. Um, let's go to share screen. Thank you guys for that. Um, Oh, thank you. Oh, um, Michael. Red, okay. And I will try to get a photo because I know that it was reading a lot redder um, on my screen. I don't know how it's reading on your guys's, but. Um, redder. Great. So you guys are all um, seeing the Facebook group, Painting Clouds, Trees, and Water group? Yep. Perfect. Yep. All right. So um, last week's video is posted there. 
And then I um, added Catherine and still having a hard time um, posting to our Facebook page. So she texts me images and then I just post them for her. Um, evidently, I have another one that she would like um, posted as well, but uh, I think I'll have to do that afterwards. Okay. Um, so let's go down here. And Karen, your awesome little notes. Fantastic. Michelle, hey, how's it going? You still here, Michelle? Yep. I am. All right. Tell us about Cape Disappointment here. Boy, look at those waves. Yep. That was, that's an image. I'm, I'll have to find the credit, but um, just the crashing waves. I thought, well, there's a challenge. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do to the sky. And obviously I just kind of got started on it, but um, yes, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Cape Disappointment is Great. amazing. It's uh, such a, an extreme little area there. Um, Washington, uh, coast um kind of the mouth of the columbia isn't it i think so all right so that that's your beginning is that where you're at right now yes great okay so you're just kind of laying in your lights and your darks beginning to map it out kind of giving us our structure it's a very interesting wave um structure isn't it like i don't know exactly what this looks like a waterfall like yeah, there must know. be a rock or something that it's that it's barreling over. Yeah, that is interesting. So good luck with that part, because I don't even know from looking at the literally at the reference photo exactly know what's going on. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's like a big line of rocks right there or uh, what beautiful colors, but very interesting. Um, yeah, I have a lot of pictures from Cape Disappointment, but my waves are usually crashing up. These seem to be kind of barrel rolling over the tops of things. Um, I have another one, but it's um, where on the, the far right, it's crashing outwardly. And I thought about trying to add that in, but, you know, this is enough to try to figure out. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, do you have any questions for where you're at? So well, far? some thoughts. What do you think about... Um, I want to do some of that nice green color in the water and the blue green and and um, but what do you think about the sky? Do you think uh, keep it kind of like that or do something different? Any ideas? Uh, I don't like the fact that it's at an angle and this is at an angle and it's just kind of right in the corner there. Um, it's like angle, 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 angle. You know what I mean? They're all kind of at the same. So I think I would definitely probably change something whether I brought in, because this actually doesn't have any horizontals hardly at all, besides up on top here. So maybe even just kind of more horizontal or it's so exciting and so dramatic, you could almost leave it pretty clear. And that might explain why there's this beautiful color in here is with a clearer sky possibly. Um, but those also kind of look like stormy waves. So yeah, you have opportunities and options there to kind of decide what's going on. Thank you. So yeah, not the best of help. <laughs> Anybody else have any recommendations? Barbara, Donald, Karen, <laughs> Phyllis? Well, maybe just no. a gray, a gray sky. Yeah, I think gray, and then that would keep the make it more special. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. All right, Karen. What do we got here? I'll go to your reference first. You there, Karen? Yeah. All right. What do we got here? Where are we at? Is this Hillsboro? Oh. No, it's uh, the Jordan in Israel. Okay. Yeah. So I sat on that rock for a couple hours. Oh, nice. Wow. I have never been to Israel. Really beautiful trees. Yeah. All right, so, oh, very nice. So you turned it into a um, kind of a no tan or a value study on your phone. Yeah, like three values. Whatever you use. Yeah. Very nice. Um, and then your beginning of a value study and kind of giving your structure and design. Way to keep everything nice and um, abstract. Um, and just kind of, yeah. Kind of messy. Abstract design. 
Um, I might want to kind of bring in my lines of where my water is, even if it's not quite in there. Yeah, that's where but I messed I up. I got lost when I started trying to put paint over it. I was like, wait, where'd my horizon go? Yeah, exactly. And it can get tough. And I do that all the time with my little marshy wetland scenes, um, kind of lose my line. So I'll bring them in or just kind of hint at them. A lot of times that information will end up going away at the end and it's not necessary, but while you're building it up, it's kind of nice to know where you are in space. Um, yeah, what are, you, uh, what are your questions or thoughts so far? And um, is this the last one or is there more? Oh, here oh we there's, go. there's that where I tried to put in some color and find the horizon. Great. But, um, I got impatient and put those little foreground grasses in there and they look so dumb, <laughs> you know, just because I just wanted to see what they would look like in yeah. there. Um, so just try to ignore those. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess I'm a little bit worried with, again, losing the horizon. Like it's starting to look a little bit like a pond instead of the river that kind of curves around that little bit of land. Oh, uh, interesting, yeah. And, um, oh. Oh, yeah, so it kind of all twists up and then goes back here, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So does it, is there ground right here as well? I, uh, not, well, I mean, the, the river's kind of opening up right there. Okay. And, and going along, but that's just a reflection what you were just pointing at. Okay. So this um, is just a very basic over the underpainting, underpainting. Yeah, which is great. And that's what I, you know, want you to do. Um, I don't know, like, truthfully from your reference, if I would know this is actually a river versus just kind oh, of, okay. a, a, you know, so <laughs> I don't know if it matters too much. I think you know, if you wanted to make it more river-like, see this ground plane here that's the bank? Mm -hmm. And then this, it really gets, I mean, it, it disappears, right? The yeah. water behind it. So if you just brought this ground plane, because it appears that you took it from a sitting position. Uh huh. So if you just pretended that you stood up uh -huh. to take this photo, we would probably be able to see that water. We'd see over the top of this bank. Okay. So if you just lowered this, mm -hmm slightly mm -hmm. let us see some of that water mm -hmm. that will take us back in there okay because yeah right now we don't can't tell that this ground doesn't close and wrap around yeah here. yeah oh and then like um just really quickly I, I still feel like um fuzzy on how to paint rocks is it, it it just does go back to observation right and thinking about it abstractly but i have those blue blobs there where i was like i don't know how to make it look heavy <laughs> sure um the a big part is you're going to want edges sharper edges right now everything's kind of equally treated besides your sure. grasses which we're ignoring um but <laughs> you want your rocks to have a firmer sharper edge Right. So your trees can have lost edges and things and your rocks, I mean, kind of can in some areas, but not up close, not, you know, you're going to want them to have sharp contrasts. Um, think about their form. Um, you know, you could, this, these rocks are pretty rounded, but you could look to like kind of some of these more angular ones if you want to make them a little more angular and a little more firm and structural feeling. Um, they're also in the shadow, so they don't have, you know, this one's a little more top lip feeling. Um, but if you have a strong shadow side and a stronger light side, um, you could also use that. So, yeah, it's about edges and contrast. All right. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully that was clear. Michelle's reference again. Very nice. And Barbara, are you here? Yep, there you are. All right. This almost looks like yep, pastel in a way. Very nice. OK. My big problem is the background. I'm thinking, I don't know where my reference picture is. I lost it in the great world of Pinterest. Oh, OK. 
So. Yeah, are I there it, other, but then I. Are there other waves going on? Because it looks like still water, still water, still water explosion. Um, like this. Yeah, one. well, you know, I, I don't know if you. <laughs> if, 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 if Bob, I can't remember, frankly. And, and, my, and I think that uh, people have been telling me I need to put some more waves back there. But when you when you when waves come up, if you have a shallow a shallow shelf and then the then the bottom just drops up, the water will come up and just whack that. Okay, yeah, it, but, does, um, it does feel a little bit weird that way. Um, but I, I have seen that too, where all of a sudden it's just like the a little bit of motion where it all of a sudden becomes shallow. All of a sudden, will just wall up right into the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but uh right but i'm not sure yeah if we could I mean, hit a little more clouds there and then also you kind of can't quite tell because it appears like this rock this wave is hitting something and kind of bursting up but i don't yeah in the references it's, it's not there's nothing there it's just kind of a wave just kind of popping up so then it makes me wonder if what's going on is this is surf going back out and surf coming in, you know, where you get this kind of two, yeah. two things and all of a sudden the wave is just hitting itself, right? Or, you know, hitting other water and it makes it right. lift up. So do you think that's what's kind of happening? Yeah, I do, I do. There's, in the reference, I know there, there were no rocks. It was just a sandy shore. And um, so my feeling was that it hit that, that, that spot where the the water just or the sand just drops off and it can certainly do that you could yeah, just walk sure. off a shelf and but i i what i'm feedback i'm getting from other artists is um that i need to do something more in the background to you know put some waves back there and that it was too dark i needed to make it lighter so that's kind of my questions is now what do I do with the background? To... Could you put some swells in with just a little bit of a uh, wave on the top? You know how sometimes there's big swells and they just have a little tiny yeah. bit of wave on the top. To me, that would help. Okay. All right. That's a good idea. And I'm Are thinking maybe on me? the very back horizon line, uh, doing some sort of atmospheric um, soft edge on the horizon line yeah. i ended up my, my horizon line was crooked so I, I i straightened it out and i haven't had the opportunity yet to um to soften that up but the mist would probably be a good idea okay and i love the white uh, movement that you have in there the wave is just beautiful Thank you. It really is. It looks like a photo almost. Do you guys see Photoshop right now or Facebook? Photoshop. Yeah. You do. We're Photoshop. Well, kind of both. Yeah, yeah we're Photoshop. That on the left. That's Photoshop. On the left. Oh, that was somebody got oh, hacked. Photoshop. A friend of mine got hacked, and I was just showing them what they, what they were sending out to people. So is Photoshop on the right? Navigator. It's the whole page. She has the whole page brought oh. up. Okay. So I just zoomed in on the wave. Um, for one, yeah, we can just quickly. Okay. I just bring that horizon line down, select all, control T, and just straighten that out a little. All right. So we've got that. And um, what I was thinking is I'm just going to grab a little bit of. Uh, whatever color here and oh I got see what I'm doing I'm at the wrong tool a little bit of this color and a little bit of airbrush and let's just see what happens if we um just kind of yeah like I said just kind of hint at some waves or you know even it doesn't have to be much i don't think i think just a little bit of mm -hmm. 
a little bit of something something will make it feel a little better sorry this is a crazy tool so so the waves in the background is that going to be really very horizontal or um, yeah they're really quite horizontal or, i mean you could, horizontal. Okay. you could um you know they could come in at a little bit of an angle but let's try that real quick and uh see what happens if we throw them in at an angle um So let's bring them more at an angle, like maybe they're kind of coming in towards us. So that kind of can work. It's kind of, I don't know, mm -hmm. I mean, cause yeah, they sometimes do kind of come in at an angle and that even helps, right? Even just that does, kind of work yeah it makes me think there's a jetty out on the back horizon line and that that's maybe an inlet yeah something like that all of a sudden it kind of depends of on which way a bit of like the land it bit. needs softer edges in the back yeah and i think that in your um in your uh there's some purple down here in the water which you know, I want to do because the sky right now feels quite separate, you know, with that strong, strong line and um, mm -hmm. the changing of the values. So um, part of me, you know, does want to bring some of that purple into um, into the water a little bit and, you know, just kind of introduce. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm just kind of messing around here, but just to kind of a little bit of reflection, however it would work. Um, so there's a little more harmony. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. And, it, you know, it doesn't have to be purple like the sky. It doesn't have to be nearly as bright. Like I turned the airbrush pressure way down. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It, it just it feels a little separate. So I think that's there was two issues with this is the waves don't um, make easy sense to us because we don't know why they're just popping up all of a sudden and breaking because they're definitely breaking like they're kind of exploding. Mm -hmm. So what I imagine again is happening is what I call the zipper is when waves are coming in and waves are going back out, like they've already come up onto the shore and now they're going back out. And when, the, right. when those two waves hit, you get this kind of all of a sudden where literally a wave or a crash just happens. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, it's difficult, like things that we will accept in photography, like just because they're a photo, so mm -hmm. it must be real, are harder. We do not get away with as much in painting um inevitably i will have okay. you know almost every class i always have one or two students who are like i want to paint this crazy crazy cloud because it looks just like a ufo or you know i want to paint this tree because <laughs> you know it's heavier at the top and smaller at the bottom and it just looks so crazy and have you ever seen a tree like this and again you'll be like well yeah it works in the photo kind of but even when you look at it in a photo you're like that is so weird so then when we make it as a painting, a lot of times we just don't get that same leniency. People are just like, oh, they don't, you know, it's wrong, right? A tree that's heavier on top than on the bottom or a cloud that looks like just a, you know, flying hot dog or something. Um, we just don't get away with. So these waves may be a little more difficult. Like literally my first instinct when I saw it was to do something like, um, you know, just you just put a rock in there. Oh, put a rock in there. You put a rock in there. You know, I didn't grow up on beaches with rocks. <laughs> That's an Oregon thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's um, oops. Another Oregon thing is you can well, put that bird on it. And put a bird on it. Yeah, put a, a bird on it. 
I yeah, can I throw mean, a couple uh, seagulls out there. Uh, as well yeah, as I see what you mean. That makes a big. Maybe I'll throw a rock in there. I could put a rock in there. Although I like my wave. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a long time to do that wave. It's a really I, good wave. I get it. Yeah, it's a beautiful wave. That's why I'm like hesitant to. And I mean, that looks kind of weird too, right now, how I put it in there. You'd have to, you know, add surf on the rock. And you, again, you live somewhere different. So we silly Oregonians are coming mm -hmm. at this with our Oregon um, reference of, you know, nature and, you know, all of that. And, you know, if you put rocks in it, your friends would be like, Barbara, what beach has rocks on it? There's no rocks on beaches. That's crazy. Um, and yeah, I think I, I would probably ignore the rocks. I think it's probably a dumb idea, actually. Um, I mean, it kind of could work, but that was my instinct is like, oh, she hasn't put the rocks in yet. Um, <laughs> but again, that's just me coming at it with my bias, right? Um, but I do wonder if just having a little bit of surf, just a touch, and it's not like these are waves. Yeah. It's just kind of the beginning of a white cap. Like there's a little bit of wind or something right. um, might help. Um, as far as having a big purple, because that's the only real, either you add more purple down here, bring some of these cloud skies up, uh, colors up from the hinting from the water up. I don't know, but it, right now it just feels kind of like, if you just told me that's not actually even in the painting, that purple band, that that's just the background that the painting is sit, sitting on, um, I would not know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel related. I like okay. the overlapping of the two waves. Yeah, that's really you know, I had to I did that because in the reference picture, um, it looked almost like two different pictures with those waves. Oh. So I extended the one, the bigger wave. Got yeah. And I that kind of made it a little yeah. interesting, but um again, like how did it do that? I don't know. Sometimes when there's a steep like it's my first it's my first wave. Yeah, well, let me compliment Great. you for a little while because this area, yeah, it's really beautiful. Your colors in here are gorgeous. I mean, I would, I love some of this color combinations and trans, uh, you know, it looks translucent. It looks like the light's coming through. Um, it I can feel the movement. You know, this is like one of those paintings I was saying, like, oh, you can almost hear it, right? You know, it's not a loud, loud crash because it's not crashing on rocks and, you know, yeah. but it's, you can definitely hear the water. Yeah, I do. Um, very nice. So there's a lot of great things going on here. Um, and that's the problem with every painting and everything we always do is we put it out into the world and then it's up to the viewers to use their, you know, what they know and to take into it. So, um yeah, and I mean, Michelle's painting uh, reference also has weird waves that we can't quite explain. Huh. Um, so that that becomes difficult. So there's times when I'm, you know, kind of explaining things or giving a reason for things in my paintings. Mm -hmm. Other times I'm just asking the viewers to go on the journey with me. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a decision you get to make. Or you can just go, you know what? I wanted to paint a wave. I painted an awesome, colorful, beautiful wave. And you know, start your next painting because mission is successful because this painting is about your wave. Wow, good, good perception. You know that that dark, a uh, little bit of darkness in the wave there almost looks like it could be a rock that the wave has come up against. And then there's almost some oh. little what look like rocks in the foreground, lower left. Yeah. So it top. kind of makes me think that there's rocks there, and also sometimes the surf is at an incoming upper angle, I mean the sand, and so it could easily be hitting a shelf. Exactly, and I think that's what, yeah, I think that's what Barbara is assuming is happening. You know, and frankly, I put the, I put the purple in there because I like the purple. That's why I put the purple in there. I okay. like it. I, did, I needed some, some contrast, something besides green and blue, and so that's why I put the purple in there. I like where you can Not see very the sand. Pardon me? I said I like the sand and the softness at the edge, at the bottom. Oh, thank you. Sand, and I like the colors 
in that area that you chose. Well, what is this? All right, well, I will put some the background a little bit more. All right, give me one half a second here. And let's... Yeah, my sky doesn't come through on the screen as blue as I have it. And I'm actually liking the little bit more purple in that sky. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was just kind of seeing what would happen if we. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what I was, what I'm thinking here, but just. Well I don't want you to take all your time on mine. I mean, you got other yeah. people you know, too. Yeah, that doesn't quite work, but I was kind of, I don't know, just kind of seeing what if we kept some of that purple, got rid of some of that purple. I mean, this is all of a sudden, I was trying to take a color from the wave and slightly yeah, alter it, it, but it doesn't feel like it belongs in this painting either. Um, so anyways. Yeah, you got um, room to yeah, play. My, my guys room to play on here but i love your wave nice job and yeah interesting oh, thank you sweetie all right so we are back flowers and thank you barbara i'm just reading a message real quick all right here we are linda are you here yes i am thank you here you are linda all right great 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 so beautiful uh things going on in here and a couple of things that i think could use a touch of work i think i commented yep so i'm just gonna read my comment real quick great beginning the wet sand is nearly perfect i mean that looks so wet and perfectly like cold wet sand um i also love the feeling and texture of the middle ground clouds that's going to be this guy here and the top left oh and then the top left clouds don't feel finished or fully realized yet so yeah, I really like this cloud a lot. That feels very um, well thought out and um, interesting. It's got some three-dimensionality to it. The sand very wet. Um, the waves feel uh, a little bit separate right now. Um, sure. But I think with a little bit of work, um, you'll be able to bring that in. Um, the two things I wanna focus on are the dark clouds up here and the rocks. So the rocks a little bit, feel like a sticker at this point. Wow. Um, a little bit separate of the object. Um, and I think we can do, we can get some of that in by, you know, adding a little bit of mist down below mm. or whatever it is, maybe bringing in some cools because you have lights and darks in here. But I think if you actually cooled down some of the shadows, got a gray blue cool that would um, make it relate to the cools that are in here. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, um, I was trying to merge two different pictures um, that I took at Cannon Beach. Okay, great. And, and one was just the rock with a, a you know, pale blue sky and very, very little interest um, with the sun is, is kind of hitting the face where I started to put some green in um, and then I tried to merge in this storm cloud. I had a, 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 a long painting. It was like, I think painting a photo that was um, a wide angle photo of this huge storm cloud um, that was quite long and had this really interesting edge that I tried to paint and bring over to the rock. So I agree with you that the, the cloud is way too dark. Um, I also am not sure I like that curve in the middle part of the cloud yeah i think it should be more straight um or more diffuse um and yeah I, I really think there should be mist at the bottom of the rocks and a little more splash up and i think the sea the sea um color is way too green um but i don't know what you think about the color of the sea i think it should be bluer yeah, I mean, it can go either way. I think what you might want to do is just get a couple little a little darker spots, um, maybe into the shadows areas that will kind of ground it a little bit. 
Okay, um, so you don't think it's a problem that it's more greenish than bluish? Uh, I mean, I've seen that so often in the Oregon coast. Um, but yeah, maybe that's part of why it doesn't quite relate as much as you could bring some of these gray blues. Um, I do wonder about when you're mixing two photos, your um, where is the sun is going to be super, super important. Where is your light source? Because um, the rocks appear to be lit from the left. The waves don't really appear to have too much of a light source, maybe from above. And this cloud back here appears to be kind of face lit, like the sun is behind us um, a little more, um, just because the darks of the cloud are on the outside of it, which makes it kind of lit from behind us. And then these big dark clouds don't have any, like I don't know where, you know, the light source. So that's always a really difficult part about combining photos is you have to come you have to figure out a singular light source and um, knock it in so yeah, I, I think i think the, the the storm cloud was very huge and dark and then as it got to the edge it kind of the gray kind of got very wispy and it had these like cumulus clouds underneath on like a shelf so it's like this big huge storm shelf mm, and and then the sun was kind of hitting the clouds from again, I think sort of the same angle, um, but they definitely had you know uh, not not soft edges to the sky. They were more crisp. Yeah, absolutely. So I just, I, get, I need to work on that. <laughs> I need yeah, to work if you can find maybe the two references too, I think that might help. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, I do love painting, you know, big storm clouds, especially, at, well, even the picture up here has kind of big storm clouds and then, you know, where things are getting washed out and rained. Um, so I totally understand. And yeah, like I said, they can, clouds can get so, so, so dark, you know, really heavy, especially out at sea and stuff. Um, but yeah, right now it just kind of feels, I, I like a lot of it. And then, but it feels, it does feel like a couple different paintings. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice wet sand, nice cloud. I mean, even haystack rock, I love your light in the dark, but it, yeah, it just, they don't feel quite like they're living in the same world yet. Not that that's, you know, you can totally get to that point. So I'll be curious to see it. Please keep sharing it. And if you would like to share the two references, I think that would help. All right, and um, Donald, are you still here? Do you have a picture up there? Not sure Donald has a picture, nope. All right, well, I think that wraps it up for us, everybody. Class seven in the bags. Donald, I looked, I didn't see a painting of yours. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't turn one in. I've been sick with COVID for the oh. last. No excuses, oh, Donald. Oh no! I'm oh. so sorry. That's horrible. Yeah, COVID. I, I just didn't feel like painting at all. Oh no, man, I yeah, I took a couple of weeks off when oh. I got COVID. I sure hope you're feeling better. Well, yeah. thank you. That uh, means a lot that you were even here for the last two classes. Boy, I was just out. <laughs> knocked out so um yeah feel feel better please and um keep getting better and <laughs> no rush <laughs> and yeah. just share uh you know share as you do, get feel better and want to and we'll be uh we'll all be here on the page and giving you feedback and support when you're ready thank you very much yeah absolutely no thank you i really do appreciate your being here and being a part of the group and uh that goes for all of you guys i had a a Thank really you. fun time. This was a definitely a challenging class. I'd never taught from such scratch before, you know, trying to bring up lesson plans and everything else and so many new references. But thanks for challenging me. Thanks for being here with me. Um, let me know. Please be very honest. Um, I would love feedback on this class just because I've never taught it this way before. Love it. Um, and uh and um, yeah, in the fall, we will either be doing a tonalism class again or um, values design and, or yeah, design and structure, um, which I really like, but we can do yeah. yeah. tonalism and design and structure. Um, 
and I hope that I see a lot of you guys back and I hope that you guys get out and uh, play your paint, get outside. It's going to be tough. It's going to be challenging, but just uh, know that, have fun and learn and um, please keep sharing on the page. You guys are awesome. Any questions at all as you part ways? I just want to say that this was so well organized. I took your tonalist class and I think I took another, but I don't remember last summer it's just getting better and better so organized and so well outlined and so informative and i don't want to say goodbye <laughs> i love it <laughs> well and i really appreciate that yeah and i mean how will we know about well i hear about them from the emails from osa but how will we know if you're going to do like you said oregon coast or uh so if you would be so kind to sign up for my newsletter so okay. simply, you guys are still seeing the, go to my website, michaelorwick.com, okay. and it, get exclusive email offers. That's where you want to go. Oh, 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 okay. And there you do. Just okay. Sign okay. up form right there. And uh, I send out newsletters uh, about twice a year. <laughs> um, I should send them out a lot more. No, I <laughs> send them out about once a month. I don't um, want the classes to end. I will never look at a tree, a cloud, or water again without thinking about what I learned here. Wow. Well, that means a lot to me. Oh, I'm not kidding. You know, I have a cherry tree on my property here. It was so bizarre. A piece of bark at the bottom when you were doing a couple of weeks ago, the trees was hanging off. So I went and picked it off. And inside it, it was ghastly. It was like carpenter ants and a slug. So I scraped it away. And I could not believe it. I thought of what you said to treat the trees like they're people with respect. They go through so much to grow. Within like a couple of days, it grew from the bottom, a, a bunch of leaves covering the hole. It was fighting back. And I could stop thinking what you said, uh -huh. that the, the trees go so much to live and, and make it through the environmental uh -huh. changes. Yeah, isn't that fun? And I mean, that is, that's one of the biggest gifts that painting gives us is just that opportunity to slow down and reflect and look at things and appreciate nature on a, on a, if not a deeper, but a, a different level. Yes. Uh, hopefully yes. deeper. But um, anyways, I, I do, I think, you know, what a gift I've been given by, uh, you know, everybody who buys my paintings and takes my classes and oh, supports God. me that they just are allowing me to go out there and look at things and appreciate things and observe things and um yeah oh the gift is, is share that's our that's um, our job i think the gifts on my side so michael uh, where are you exhibiting right now if i wanted to go you said salem yeah also if you go to my website so we're still on my website oh, it's all on the website okay i see about michael okay yeah I see. Uh, yeah galleries right there Okay, perfect. Okay. And there you go. I expect you to visit all eight of these. This time. <laughs> That's how you're organizing your travels. I don't think I'm going to North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, and well, Carmel by the Sea will get you two of them. So that's worth the trip. I, there's no words to express to you. You are what, not apple polishing you. You are such a well rounded teacher and you teach. Are you so calling me fat? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't judge people. I just, <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> your lessons are. I so actually cool. prefer well-rounded. That's nice. Yeah. They are so well-rounded. They include everything. I mean, there isn't an, a, a, uh, anything that you've forgotten. I mean, like how um, I did post a painting, but it's a painting I did a year ago. I, I wanted to, I, I was having a problem with the, um, rise in line again but you don't need to do anything about it but that you gave me something to always think about and work on but when if if i can get to manuka um the process frankly speaking that would you be teaching or just painting what how does that work oh i'll be definitely teaching but there'll be a lot of painting time okay so then uh if there is a, a single opening if not my husband said i just to drive up because I would only take 25 minutes. But anyhow, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. And I will see you in September. And I, I would, I've taken your tonalist class, but I think it'd be so great with values if that's in your agenda. Yep. Yep. Oh uh, yeah. Design and composition. I think that's by far and away the most important. 
class okay. I teach. I mean, for me, <laughs> let alone my students. Um, so yeah, I'll just figure it'll it'll be design and composition, but whether or not I present it through tonalism again or whatever else. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, be well. Sorry to hear you had COVID and and the. Oh, that was a long time ago. Thanksgiving. Oh God. Okay. So be well. Good luck on your commissions and. Have a lovely summer and enjoy the Girl Scout adventure. With the oh, kids. yeah, it'll be great fun. Okay, thank you again, Michael. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great. All right, Bye -bye. Fred, it was really great having you in class again. Great to see you. Susan, you are always a delight. Love oh. having you, Michelle. You're in all my classes, and I'm so grateful for that. Donald, it was really nice to have you in class. And Karen, always love to see you and the kids. And thanks for sharing the funny little uh, magnets or little notes. Those are really great. If you have any more, I would love to see them. And uh, Phyllis, thank you so much. It was great to have you and see you again. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see each other at Manuka as well again. All right, you guys, take care, everybody. Have a great, great, great summer. Eventually, spring and summer will be here, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Bye, guys. Take care.